Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Ascendant series. And we completed Aries, Taurus, and Gemini. And now we are going to discuss about Cancer Ascendance, Cancer Lagna. And this will also apply if you have uh, too many planets in Cancer, okay? If, or if your Ascendant Lord is in Cancer, or your Atma Karaka is in Cancer, or even if your uh, Sun and Moon is somehow linked with Cancer. Okay. I mean, of course, Moon uh, is the Lord of this sign. But anyways, uh, this is a study of the Cancer Ascendant, the Lagna, the first house. And uh, today we shall discuss the Lordships of uh, all the planets. Okay, And uh, specifically where a planet gets exalted and debilitated that we shall discuss uh, in the next video, uh, which will be as Planets for Cancer Ascendants. Okay. Okay, as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your ascendant or your life path, then you can always go down to the description section of my videos where you will find the link to my website to book a consultation with me. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And Cancer is one of my favorite ascendants because it's the ascendant of Lord Ram, Mariada Purushottam. Bhagwan Ramchandra himself from the Ramayana. He's one of the avatars of Vishnu. So, what is Cancer? Uh, the Lord of the Ascendant always shows the uh, default tendencies. Okay, and now, of course, uh, whatever I speak here, uh, not more than twenty to thirty percent of these things will match for you. Why? Because you have. A different horoscope every cancer ascendant has a different horoscope their moon which is lord of cancer will sit in a different sign in a different house different planets will aspect cancer uh, the first house different planets will be sitting in cancer but i'm curious to know how much of these things pertaining to all these planets and houses matches with you okay so please do me a favor write it down in the comments of how you feel regarding the houses and planets okay so what is the first house? The first house is lauded by Moon, of course. Moon is the fastest moving planet uh, in Vedic astrology. And therefore, uh, Cancer Ascendants can have this, this tendency to have too many uh, thoughts. Okay, Not intellectual thoughts. That's more of a Gemini characteristic. But when I say it, uh, internal thoughts, it means uh, emotions can be very important in that person's life. So therefore, the most crucial thing for a Cancer Ascendant, the most important, and this can actually uh, upgrade the horoscope to a different level altogether. That is that uh, you should always prioritize uh, emotional well-being above everything else in life. Okay. So even if you're making millions of dollars, but if you're not happy emotionally, if you do not have a family or uh, you are not uh, having good connections with people in general, uh, or if the other, you are in the other side that uh, there are too many people who are creating distress for you mentally. So you need to stay away from those people, okay? So you have to understand that uh, emotions will always uh, take a toll on you if you do not take care, okay? And uh, if you are taking care of your emotional health, your emotional well-being, you will do like nobody else. You will rise very high in life, okay? And uh, this will be uh, more, uh, this will be more, uh, you will feel this more actually if your moon is also in Kendra. Kendra means 1, 4, 7, 10 okay? in these four houses. You will feel this more. So emotional security is very important for a Cancer Ascendant. And uh, therefore, it's very crucial that because this is the Lord of the first house. Okay, So first house drives your intelligence also. Lagna represents uh, the word the is used for Lagna, which is intelligence. So if you want to be very intelligent and very sharp and very uh, forward, then you must uh, seek emotional security. Otherwise, you may uh, feel that your uh, mind is going in 10 different directions. Okay? And for Cancer Ascendance, uh, it's very crucial that you uh, do this mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, or you can also read the Ramayana. These are very uh, beautiful remedies for Cancer Ascendance. Okay? 
and you can do this mantra 108 times this will really 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 help you this will really benefit you okay and um, apart from this uh, they are also having a great tendency uh, to eat good food and they are most of the times fond of milk products i have seen and uh, they if now if moon is badly placed or is afflicted they might have lactose intolerance okay this is what i have seen but depends on how your chart is and where your moon is or i have seen they absolutely hate milk products due to some reason it's like this uh, paradox which is there okay uh, so yeah the, the, these are the traits which can happen they can have great uh, affection for people they can have great affection for animals and many animal rights activists are also uh, seen from cancer i would say and cancer is originally the fourth house of the mother so they are very loving and caring in general unless the lagna is very heavily afflicted by planets like saturn and mars sometimes okay but even if saturn and mars are linked with moon or with the ascendant even then i see they have a soft corner for people in general and they tend to uh, trust people quite easily i have seen uh, and if the lagna is afflicted then it can happen that they cannot trust anybody okay? they have a hard time trusting somebody because they have been cheated or they had trusted somebody too much so this kind of uh, these dynamics can come sometimes okay and then we move on to the uh, second house which is ruled by the sun mm. leo is in the second house so they they can have uh, great pride and great uh, admiration for their family and wherever leo sits you do not like to hear insult regarding that house <laughs> So for cancer people, if you uh, insult their family, then you have had it. Uh, they cannot tolerate. They can tolerate uh, insul being insulted themselves, but uh, they have a very hard time to listen to somebody if they are speaking badly against their family. Okay, so uh, and uh, they can have this great pride to show off their family status or their family lineage, or they can their family lineage can be very powerful or they can have a very great tradition also like uh, for example in lord ram's case we had uh, ragu vansh you know, or he was from this great uh, surya vansh okay, it's a great 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 dynasty of course one of the most famous dynasty surya vansh and chandra vansh uh, but in general i have seen uh, if sun is well placed then they imbibe the traditions of the family very nicely okay and if sun is not well placed then they are superficially boasting about their family or they are trying to hide the mistakes of their family okay so let me know uh, what is your tendency where is your sun okay and uh, then uh, the second house can also show food and so they can have a lot of indulgence in food actually okay and that that can be a very prominent part of their life you know, food because wherever sun rules that shows a very prominent part of your life that's like your identification of the ego okay so therefore the second house is very crucial for cancer also because sun and moon are the luminaries okay then uh, what about the third house the third house is virgo and virgo is ruled by mercury mm -hmm. so this is a very beautiful thing to have that uh, the third house which is originally the sign of um, gemini which is ruled by mercury here is also ruled uh, by mercury because virgo is the mool tricon or the exaltation sign of mercury so this is even better okay so the the good thing about this is uh, as i say every, everything has good and bad it depends on where mercury is placed okay or which planets are in the third so uh, the good thing is uh, if mercury is well placed or if you have good planets in the third house then uh, you will always do your proper research before you comment on anything so therefore cancer ascendants if they uh, study things properly then they can be very good uh, communicators they can be very good uh, public uh, speakers and they can gel with people very well very beautifully they can understand uh, different point of views okay and uh, if mercury is not well placed then virgo can become too much argumentative you know? 
Now the thing here is moon and mercury are somehow not having a very great relationship. Okay. Now moon doesn't consider mercury as its enemy, but mercury considers the moon as his enemy. Okay. So uh, how what can happen is if the third house is not good, then the then mercury can mercury can hit the moon, which means the emotion the uh, the intellectual side of your brain can torment the uh, emotional side okay the emotional side may not tor torment the intellectual side but the intellectual side which means you may get too much too much into arguments and trying to prove your point in a way that you uh you your mind which is the ascendant which is moon uh, it's getting crazy actually okay so it's not very good to uh, get too much into argumentation with people because anyways people they will only listen from their own standards okay they only hear what they want to hear not what we want to say okay so therefore uh, use your mercury properly uh, help people by your communication and uh, try to uplift others by your communication rather than getting bogged uh, emotionally by what they say. So therefore, uh, if the third house or mercury is not good, then uh, they can sometimes uh, cry also in seclusion if somebody speaks badly to them. Okay, uh, Because uh, mercury has this tendency to hit the moon. Okay, So they may cry in seclusion or uh, they may be very emotional if somebody insults them. Okay. Now, that's how the ascendant is, or it may be the opposite, you know, they are totally cold and they are like least interested on what others are speaking. <laughs> so it depends on how Mercury is placed, okay. Then uh, we have the fourth house, which is the sign of Libra. Libra is ruled by Venus. And Cancer is also the original uh, sign number four. So this um, this sign, this house is very, very, very important for cancer. Okay, the mother is very important, and um, they can have a great relationship with their mother, or uh, if Venus is badly placed, they can uh, have a very bitter relationship with the mother. Okay, or if there are malefics like Saturn and Rahu there, they can have a terrible relationship. Or the mother may cause the downfall of this uh, person. Okay, not now. No mother will cause a downfall, but somehow. Uh, it can happen that due to their mother externally, they may have a lot of suffering in their life, okay? Yeah, lo, so, so like in case of Lord Ram, he had retrograde Saturn in fourth house and uh, Kei Kei was his stepmother and she had banished him uh, to the forest, okay, for 14 years. This is just an example. And uh, if Venus is well placed, then this can give a great harmonious relationship with the mother and also because venus is the fourth lord so it can happen that uh, uh, the relatives the female relatives are more prominent okay females are more prominent in your family or even if males are prominent they have a very feminine nature you know they are like very soft and very uh, their, their behavior is like females and uh, you may feel when you go to their home that uh, this energy is uh, very dominant okay so, and uh, they would love to decorate their home and um, because Venus also represents uh, arts and paintings. So you might sometimes find they, that whenever it comes to their home, they like to decorate their home with a lot of paintings. Okay, Or Venus represents things like water also, Jal, Jala Tattva, Moon and Venus both. And therefore, uh, you might find they have a lot of aquariums in their homes and... Uh, they might have, uh, if you go to their home, then they, they will offer you very good drinks, okay? And if uh, Venus is afflicted, then this can lead to uh, you know, drinking too much alcohol and all this, all right? So that's how the fourth house functions. And uh, they have a great affinity for vehicles also. And because Venus is the fourth lord, so therefore they have a, tenden they have a tendency for too much luxury, okay? Or they like good music when they are in the car, right? These things can happen because Moon also shows uh, music actually and singing, right? Then what about the fifth house? Fifth house is ruled by Mars, Mangal, Scorpio is there in the fifth house, okay? So therefore, if the fifth house is linked with the eighth or twelfth, then this can show love affairs. Uh, uh, and if they have love affairs, then they can be very intense, which means uh, if the love affair is good, then they are like in the heavens. <laughs> uh, 
and if the love affair is not good then they can feel as if they are uh, in a hellish uh, circumstance okay so therefore uh, again because it's a trine so therefore uh, it's very crucial to have good uh, love relationships okay even if you're married then fifth house can show your children and uh, it can show your creativity and they can have this uh, they, they might love all these you know antique things you know old things these these things are seen by scorpio actually so they may love all these things to decorate their home by uh, bringing you know paintings from different places and different countries which are very old you know the uh, so this is how you can see and uh, if if their relationship with the children is good then they are very happy it can give you a lot of it can give them a lot of pleasure and happiness and if it's bad then it can really wreck havoc in their lives okay now let's go to the sixth house sagittarius mool trikon sign of jupiter which gets exalted in cancer okay so therefore jupiter is the sixth lord and therefore it's very crucial that uh, cancer ascendants are always seeking the right guidance regarding how their daily life should be what their daily work should be their career related issues okay because whichever house jupiter rules in your chart it shows you might need or you will need or you should take some kind of guidance related to that okay especially where sagittarius is falling not necessarily pisces so because sagittarius is in the uh, sixth house so therefore they might have to take uh, they might have to hire a uh, a uh, health trainer or a fitness trainer sometimes okay and they might um, have to learn a lot about their health or they might uh, they might need some strict discipline or their their uh, guide has to be very strict okay which means uh, if your cancer ascendant uh, has uh, a guide who is like you know not very strict himself or herself then it, they might be in trouble okay so any area of life if you're taking a guide then it, sh it should happen that the guru or the guide or the counselor or the mentor is very strict because it's the sixth house you see sixth house shows strictness and discipline okay otherwise uh, you may again uh, lose track all right so please take a guru who is very strict not very 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 strict but at least strict enough to get you through all right now seventh house is ruled by saturn it's the sign of capricorn mm. so now sometimes uh, people think uh, that cancer ascendants have delayed marriages well that's not entirely true you have to interpret that as per time place circumstances so if they have any planet in the seventh house in cancer and the dasha of that planet runs when the person is between 25 to 30 35 then uh, there is no delayed marriage okay no no issues with that but if it happens that there is no planet in the seventh or in the second or in the eleventh because these three are houses of marriage then if the person is running saturn's mahadasha 23 25 28 then it can happen that there is a possibility for delayed marriage but i have seen uh, hundreds of charts with cancer ascendants where uh, they were running like uh, mahadasha of sun and antardasha of saturn why do i say sun saturn because sun is the second lord and saturn is the seventh lord and then they did not have any delays in marriage okay so therefore uh, it's not very good to pass a judgment like this that cancer ascendants will always have delayed marriages okay so it depends on the dashas and which planets are uh, giving the marriage okay so by that you can judge okay yeah and uh, saturn rules their seventh house so that shows that uh, the primary challenge of the partner is to stabilize them emotionally okay because uh, your ascendant is the seventh house of your spouse okay so uh, emotionally uh, stabilizing somebody is a very difficult task and this is why uh, if you are too much dependent on others emotionally or uh, cancer ascendant specifically then others may feel overburdened and they may start neglecting you okay so for cancer it's very important that you have a life a good life uh, apart from your marriage okay uh, apart from your marriage i don't mean uh, you should stay in the office 24 hours or you should have a million dollar career i don't mean that but 
you must be a happy person individually okay and you should be happy doing your own activities and then you should uh, also include your partner it's not that uh, you are totally dependent on them because then they may feel uh, frustrated suffocated and they may tend to ignore you they may uh, have a tendency to stay away from you okay this may be for any person not only your husband wife okay for anybody in general okay then we have the eighth house which is aquarius which is again loaded by saturn and this is a very beautiful uh, placement to have uh, the lordship of the eighth house uh, to saturn and saturn is the original karak for the eighth house so this energy can act very harmoniously if you delve it into research okay so they say that uh, cancer and scorpio makes great detectives okay so be a detective but in the right area not that you are just uh, going on or uh, stalking somebody or becoming a detective in your spouse's life okay that's not good but if you use your uh, power of discipline and stability and uh, power of or uh, intelligence to understand what the eighth house is you know, which is the house of depth research and intimacy then this can be very good and aquarius is also the sign of innovation so you can do a lot of innovations and discoveries and inventions which nobody can do if you use it properly okay that will depend on planets in the eighth and where is saturn okay so therefore this can be a very good placement and uh, depending on that eighth house it can also show how is your relationship with the in-laws okay and it might happen that your in-laws are a bit unconventional and your in-laws um, may have a strong hold on your spouse why do i say this because saturn is also the seventh lord and the eighth lord okay so so it's like your spouse and the spouse's family are together so you can you may feel sometimes if saturn is badly placed that uh, your spouse doesn't listen to you they are only listening to their family members okay uh, so that might sometimes create some tasks within the marriage but yeah it can be the other way around also that uh, your spouse's family uh, is helping you your spouse in your marriage and you know they are also contributing to it uh, financially also okay so this is how you can see either it's going to be this side or that side depending on where saturn is then we have the ninth house which is lauded by uh, pisces which is jupiter okay this is a very beautiful placement jupiter is the karak for the ninth house and he lords the ninth house here and pisces has a tendency to uh, wherever pisces is you will have a tendency to understand things which is not from uh, like intellectual sources because mercury gets debilitated there Pisces goes by feel by feelings okay and by trying to understand the universe by observing and by realizing realization is very important so therefore for cancer ascendance it's very crucial that uh, whenever you are doing some spiritual practices or you are uh, getting associated with a spiritual community then you must have faith because wherever jupiter is sitting or where whichever house of jupiter rules like ninth in your case uh, there is a demand for faith so without faith you cannot obtain god specially but for you it's even more important okay so uh, you should try to develop a inner connection with the guru because ninth house is the house of the guru or the father so therefore you might have great admiration for the father and uh, you might uh, have great trust and great faith in the guru and i have seen cancer ascendants they are ready to do anything for god or for guru and also jupiter gets exalted in cancer so this can show you can be very good in bhakti yoga so you can read the bhakti literatures like shrimad bhagavatam uh, Bhagavad Gita, then Ramayana, especially. You can read about uh, Shabri, you can read about Kunti, and you can read about Arjun, you can read about Yudhishthir. These all are great devotees of Krishna and Ram, also, like Shabri, for example, a great devotee of Ram, and then Hanumanji is always there, of course. So, if you study the devotional characters from the scriptures, then uh, it may be very beneficial for you in the long run. 
then we have uh, the 10th house which is ruled by Mangal Mars is the one ruling your 10th all right so Mars is a very interesting planet uh, because he gets debilitated in cancer okay and um, therefore uh, Mars has a lot of weightage in the horoscope okay so therefore um, whenever it comes to uh, things like career and all this uh, it is uh, good if you uh, are rightly directed okay because um, what can happen sometimes is you might try to force your authority on somebody okay 10th house 10th lot can show what you force and if you try to force anything uh, then uh, you may yourself be unhappy because Mars gets debilitated in the ascendant. So therefore, it's crucial that uh, whatever you are doing, you understand that uh, you have to be determined and you have to be focused. At the same time, you should not force yourself on others. If somebody is not comfortable doing things the way you want them to do, then you may end up hurting yourself more than you think that they are hurting themselves or you are hurting themselves, all right? But if yeah, but yes, uh, if you are uh, very much goal oriented and very focused, then uh, this can be a very great uh, placement for you. And because Aries is the sign which is the first sign which shows creation. Okay, so therefore you might also create something new. So Cancer ascendants can make very good uh, entrepreneurs and very good. Uh, uh, visionaries actually and sun also gets exalted there the second lord okay so it can show some help from the family coming in or some family business if you have or continuing the tradition of the family is very important okay and then we have the 11th house where the ascended lord moon gets exalted which is taurus ruled by venus okay so therefore it's very crucial that uh, cancer ascendants have good friendly relations with people and uh, if you have that then you will see your uh, life is naturally very good and because you yourself as the ascendant lord uh, will feel as if you are exalted exalted means you are at the peak okay so have good time with your friends and taurus shows food and luxury and comfort so you can uh, have luxurious food with your friends uh, you can go to restaurants you can go to uh, good places where you like to eat or you can uh, also uh, go on long drives sometimes with your friends all right because taurus also shows long drives comfort long drives you know. <laughs> okay that will depend on venus if venus is badly placed then you may not like associating with people and you may stay too much with yourself okay so everything depends on the placements. We cannot just say what is good and bad. Okay. Then finally, we have uh, the sign Gemini, which is in the 12th house. And this can be good uh, or bad, depending on Mercury. Now, when this is good is uh, if you are uh, planning to write something uh, during the night. So in, in the night, you may feel you are more productive or your energy is more okay so if you are using it for mercury related tasks in the night then it is good but there's one dark side this can give you insomnia and uh, give you too much thought processing okay so the best thing for cancer ascendants is if they are having too many thoughts while sleeping or before they want to sleep and that's not letting them sleep so before you sleep you should take a pen and paper and write down all your thoughts you see mercury is writing 12th house is the sleep okay then you can definitely sleep better and you can understand much more you can be more in tune with the universe 12th house shows what you learn from the universe without anybody telling you so therefore this is how you can understand uh, what the universe wants okay so take a pen and paper and write it down and i'm sure you will do very good all right that is it from my side and in the next video we shall discuss about planets for cancer ascendance in that we will specifically go into where a planet gets exalted and where a planet gets debilitated okay each of the planets the nine planets thank you very much for your patience and if you like to watch other videos for ascendance i'll put it here and if you uh, like this video click the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and share it with any of your cancer ascendant friend or family member 
and if you want a consultation please go to my website down below all right what is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him